So this year, I've got another idea, a little idea I want to extol, which is curiosity, curiosity for its own sake, and being part of something larger than ourselves. I've been studying and looking at the notebooks of Leonardo da Vinci. And like a good ideas festival, Leonardo connects art to science. And in the Codex Lester, the one that Bill Gates bought for millions and millions of dollars, uh, he wrote a very simple question, which is, why is the sky blue? Now, this is a phenomenon we all see every day. You know, go outside, it's an amazing phenomenon. But most of us are no longer curious about it. As a child, we probably asked the question one day. We probably got a mumbo-jumbo answer or something we didn't quite understand. And then we went on to some other deep mystery that might be puzzling us, like, I don't know, what came first, chocolate milk or chocolate ice cream. <laughs> but Leonardo, throughout his life, was curious about it. The air is absolutely clear, so why is the sky blue? He gets close to the answer. The blue color is caused, he writes, by moisture that vaporizes in particles and is hit by the sun's rays. His quest was inspiring. Leonardo did not need to know why the sky was blue. He could paint the Mona Lisa without knowing. But in a deeper sense, he did need to know. He was curious. And he realized, as he said, that there was a beauty manifest in the laws of the universe. And the ability to marvel at such beauty is a form of spirituality. It's what makes us human. Humans are the species that is capable of being curious about why the sky is blue. His curiosity in the Codex Lester struck me because I had actually seen that question before, and I'd done a double take when I saw it before. It's Albert Einstein who asked himself, not as a child, but as a 32-year-old, exactly why is the sky blue? And in 1911, building on the work of Leonardo, he calculates the detailed formula for the scattering of light by molecules. He did this not because it would be useful. He and Leonardo could have just done just fine, like we do in our lives, not really knowing why the sky is blue. They did it because they realized that they were part of phenomena that are larger than ourselves. We often emphasize the utility of ideas, that they're practical. We proclaim how important it is to turn them into something practical. Ben Franklin did that when he, after the first year of his electricity experiments. He lamented that they had discovered a lot of things, but they had found no practical use for this electricity. He said that the only practical use they had found so far, because he'd been shocked a few times and knocked down, was that electricity tends to make a vain man humble. Um, <laughs> But that, after flying his kite in the rain, he conceived of the lightning rod, which was the most useful invention of that era. We like to judge our ideas festival sometimes, like our universities and our schools, by how useful the impact is. That's one reason we hold an action forum later in the summer, to encourage our network of young leaders to do something useful and practical with our ideas. That's why we have a section of our magazine and a part of our website called Impact. So when General McChrystal comes here and says that everybody should have an opportunity to serve the country, we start a project to create service year cores, where we discuss urban innova uh, innovation. And then Phyllis Taylor, Bob Steele, helps us create an innovation lab at the, U at the um, Institute. We like to show we can have practical consequences. But this week, we should also remember that it's important to relish ideas to wonder about them, to marvel at them, ranging from the beauty of math to the future of cities, simply because we are curious about them, a pure curiosity, a curiosity that may have no direct utility to our daily tasks once we come down from this mountain. It's a type of curiosity we all got to indulge as kids. Some of us got to indulge it at colleges before colleges became places that felt they had to emphasize utilitarian and useful skills. That's what made Leonardo special. It's what made Einstein special. As Einstein once wrote to a friend, I have no particular talents. I'm only passionately curious. And he also emphasized that that curiosity was good, not just because it might lead to something useful, but it had a value of its own. Curiosity, he wrote, 
has its own reason for existing. Exactly 100 years ago this week, the very end of June of 1950, Einstein traveled to Göttingen in Germany to explain for the first time a new theory he was working on. It actually became the most beautiful theory in the history of science, the general theory of relativity. His theories led to many practical things. His fingerprints are on almost anything practical we have in our lives today, semiconductors, microchips, GPS, space travel, atomic energy, lasers. But his curiosity was not motivated just by a desire to help create smartphones or space shuttles. He was driven, he said, echoing Leonardo, by a desire to understand the spirit manifest in the laws of the universe. And as he wrote a friend just before he died, quote, never cease to stand like curious children before the great mystery into which we are born. And that should be our mission, your mission, all of our mission this week. Indulge in your curiosity, not simply because it may lead to something useful, but because it might allow us to stand again like curious children before the great mystery into which we were born.